Shalom, 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 shalom. First and foremost, giving infinite praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahusha, Ba'ashem, Rechakodash. Giving double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom and salutation to all you sincere alchemists across the four winds, pushing us truth with sincerity of heart. I'm your fellow servant, Kasama God from the DC camp, coming at you through the spirit and power of Yahweh. Ba'ashem, Yahusha, Ba'ashem, Chakodash, feed the elect. Now, in this lesson, it's, uh, it's going to be about comf comfort and uh, comforting the souls of the Israelites, so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, um, in particular, the elect, the hopeful elect, all right, the hopeful elect, um, 144,000, 12,000 men from each tribe, and the uh, remaining of the, um, the elect, the one third. All right, which constitutes of men, women, and children um, spread across um, the four winds, the four corners of the earth. Um, you know, this lesson is going to be about, um, in particular, you know, brothers that, that um, you know, listen, the, the, the sisters that do listen, but uh, most importantly, the brothers that listen. Because at the end of the day, uh, the men lead and the women follow. Men fight wars and... Um, you know, and, and and women just just follow. That's just what it is. Um, the, the Heavenly Father speaks to the men of Israel, and when you're in this truth, in particular the teachers uh, in this gospel, um, when you're in this truth and you be, you know, there's a lot that you go through, and there's always like a sense of like there's a sense of um, confidence that comes that's established over the years of pushing this gospel. But then there's always a sense of well, you know. Um, there still could be a potential that hey, you may not be right, but for the most part, you believe that there's a higher potential that you could be, and and and, and that's how that's how you move forward in this gospel, all right? And um, and you become more accomplished through um, you become more confident through accomplishments, um, but what you really always seek for is approval, um, what I call the seal of approval, which we know the which ultimately is the seal of election. All right, and I have this sign right here. This image said, "Um, um, someone approved," and I wanted to kind of go back to, um, you know, brothers that, um, you know, if you have a house, um, if you had, if you've had to, um, purchase anything, right, anything that you, um, that you want to purchase, uh, a house, an apartment, a car, right, uh, whatever it is, um, that you wanted to purchase, that you had purchased, just go back to, um, the the process that it took. Uh, to get approved, all right. Um, what was the process for you to get approved um, to get your first apartment, all right? Because well, your credit was all was all effed up, and you know what process did you have to get to? You have to go through to get um to get approved uh, for a car, all right. Um, look at what you know you got you got put through. All the different uh, they had to call certain people. They had to go into your past. Um, you know these are different things that you had to do to get that 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 approved right and then when you got that hey you know what this is approved you know you had a sense of accomplishment okay cool this is this is happening all right this is really happening but go back to the in between right the things that happened for you to be approved all right that process that happened um like i said credit check uh, credit history um uh you know the expenses how how the creditors, you know, was kind of like making sure they can trust you. And then when you're able to go back to those details and then you apply this to the gospel, as we're going to go into this lesson, you're going to realize that um, it's really no different in how the Lord deals with us, you know, when it comes to being approved. All right. So without further ado, let's um, first let's look up the word approved. All right. Because that word is going to come up in the scripture as I as I go into as I go into it, uh, the word approved is tried, all right? It's tried, tested. Like I said, you, before you get an apartment, they have to try you, and they got to they gotta know how much money you make, right? Um, how much money you bring, your gross income. I mean, personal information. There's no way you're going to get an apartment, you're going to get a car, you're going to get anything uh, um, in here, right? And even in this society, right, without them hash, ha actually having personal information about you and then testing to trying to see if you really worth the product that that you're trying to uh, that you're trying to purchase. Right. So in this case, the Heavenly Father is no different. 
when you when you're in this gospel, it's like, hey, you still have to be tried. All right? You still have to be tested. All right? It's just experienced. OK, like even when it comes for, for a job example, they all they ask you about it, you know, job experience. Again, it goes into it. There's a process to being approved. That's the that's the main thing. All right. And it says reliable. How reliable is this person? All right. The scripture speaks about how wisdom will try you because she can but before she can uh, 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 trust you with her understanding, with her jewels, she has to try you. All right. So that's what it means to be approved. It says tried, tested, experienced, expert, reliable, effective. All right. Trustworthy. Now, let's click on approve. And it says uh, to demonstrate, prove, right? Demonstrate what you have to actually show, right? You have to show, meaning you have to put in work, all right? Approve, agree to, assent. To is good, regard as good, to try, test something, okay? Honest, genuine, honest, genuine. That's what the scripture speaks about, sincerity of the heart, sincerity of the spirit, all right? So, now let's let's go to um the lesson. Let's go to uh Second Corinthians chapter six. So we're gonna read six one through ten, and that's where the lesson is gonna be in. All right, and the subtitle in Second Corinthians the sixth chapter is their ministry commended, and it says we then because remember at this point Paul is speaking to the Israelites in Corinth. All right, that's who Paul is speaking to. In this case, we know he's speaking to us. All right, he's speaking to the Israelites, the hopeful elect across the four winds. It says, "We then, as workers together with him, beseech you." Because and then again, who is he speaking to? The elect about he's speaking to them about Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, the Son of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, whom the world has ignorantly known as Jesus Christ. All right, it says, "So we then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of the Most High in vain." All right, so don't and don't, don't get yourself involved into something that's so precious, but you wasting your time because you're not putting in the effort. Going back to approve, demonstrate. All right, you believe in words, but you don't believe in actions. That is a problem. That is working in vain. Okay. You can't just pull up to an apartment, uh, an apartment or a dealership or a uh, 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 house creditors or bankers and say, hey, I just want a house. And they're supposed to just be like, OK, cool. Bam. Approved. No, it doesn't work like that. You know it. We all know this. Well, you can't act like the Heavenly Father, you know, works in a, less, a, a lesser manner than men. If men have to try you and approve you to give them to give you an approval to things that are precious to them, why wouldn't the Heavenly Father, the whole, the, the, the all powerful Yahweh by Shemel Shah, wouldn't put the same stress, all right, on things that that could not even compare to the things that you are that you want to purchase in this world? That's how great this truth is, all right. So it says, um, verse verse two, it says, for he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted. And in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, and now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So we're in the season now of the accepted time. In the season of what? Of salvation. That's why you see what's going on now. That's why the United States, a.k.a. the virgin daughter of Babylon, is collapsing right in front of our eyes. Because it's the accepted time. So-called end of the world. Which is nothing but the end of Edom Esau's age. The end of the Edomites' rulership. Who are the Edomites? It's the so-called white race. All right, the descendants of a man called Esau, the twin brother to who? To Jacob, and Jacob being the forefather of the Israelites, the twelve tribes. Okay. So it says, verse six: Given no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed. So, you have to watch your conduct. Okay, that's a part of the approval process. You have to watch your conduct. In this gospel, you can't listen. We all have so-called personal lives, but it's really so-called because our personal life is in truth. It's in this truth. OK, that's what our personal life is. It's in the truth. Everything else is just a sideshow. All right? It's just basically temporary entertainment. All right? It has no real weight. OK, everything else besides this truth. So when you get involved into all these entertainments, which there's nothing wrong with, with balance and having a little bit of entertainment, a.k.a. folly. Just make sure, right? Make sure that your folly, whatever you get into, you don't mix it up with the gospel. 
Because then other men that do not understand the dichotomy and the complexity of the truth will blame the gospel because they will believe that, hey, this is you're basically pushing your folly as a part of the gospel. So you have to be able to separate the two so that, hey, there would, it would never be a fallback, you know, and, and a fallback into the ministry. All right. So these are things that you learn with wisdom and experience. All right. And living in truth in a world of lies. All right. So now let's go to um, verse four. It says, but in all things approving. And that's where the word comes in. In all things approving ourselves as the ministers of the most high ministers or servant. And much so we in all things we approve in ourselves, meaning we want to be approved. All right. We want the seal of election to be put upon our souls to be revealed, really, because the elect already sealed. All right? It's all about the, the revelation and right? the, the revealing of of the sealed elect and the elect themselves don't know that. That's the reason why, you know, we call ourselves hopeful elect one seeking to be approved. But then we know it's not just on words. Right. It is also on what actions, achievement, the way we carry ourselves, the way we how much care we have for the truth and everything that comes with the truth. All right. How much faith we have. All right. How much care we have for the, the doctrine, you know, um, um, putting the doctrine above all as far as making sure the doctrine is pushed 100 percent because it's through wisdom that men are saved. The scripture tells you that. OK. It says, but in all things approving ourselves, and we looked up the word approve, meaning we're testing, being tested, trial. Let's look up the word one more time, approving, uh, approve, all right? It says tried, testing, experienced, expert, reliable, effective, all right? Effective. I always talk about the word prolific. You have to be effective and you have to be prolific. You know, when you put these videos all right. Don't just look at it as a hey, man. It's a quarter. You know, understand what you're dealing with. All right. If you come to um, if you if you uh, if you're trying to purchase uh, going back again to the purchase thing, right? Uh, trying to get approved for a car, a vehicle or whatever um, that you want to be approved. You they usually ask for um, for your uh, 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 check stubs. Right. So you bring your, your past uh, 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 check stubs and and. You got to bring it to 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 uh, the banker, the dealer, or whatever, and 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 but you make sure that you don't bring no damn check that you was, you know, that you took a whole bunch of days off because you need checks, especially checks that the most recent checks that show that you've been putting in work that you are reliable. Well, the heavenly Father is the same mentality. Yeah, listen, you have to show reliability in this gospel. All right, you can't be wishy washy or lukewarm. All right. The Heavenly Father deals with men that are reliable, consistent. And I'll always talk about talk to brothers. We, you know, when we, we, we had, our, 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 we, you know, we had our talks is, you know, when the Heavenly Father speaks about being on fire with the Heavenly Father, how about Shem seeks is really when he says fire is consistency. It's not high peaks and super lows. You fire, you on fire for one week. Right. And then for two weeks, you just disappear. You fall off the, you know, the, the, the face of the earth. OK, that's just not what the Lord is looking for. Consistency is what the Lord is looking for. Right? These are things that shows reliability. Those are signs that you really want to be approved for what you're looking for. In this case, what are we trying to get approved for? The kingdom of heaven, eternal life, salvation. All right. That's what we want to be approved for. We want to have a, a, a spot in those chariots when the Lord shows up to deliver his elect. We want to we want to we want to find out if the seal of approval was all was always stepped onto our souls. That's what we fight because the Lord already knows we're not fighting here to show the Lord that we're part of the elect. The Lord already knows that our fight is to find out if we're part of the elect It's to find out about ourselves. All right. Always understand that. So you don't have to be a man. I guess I got to do this for the Lord. Well, you're doing this for the Lord. That's true. But ultimately, the Lord is making you do it for him so you can find out about yourself. <laughs> OK. Because the Lord is all powerful. If you decide not to do it, you gonna get effed up. You're going to be destroyed. You know what I'm saying? OK, <clears throat> so let's go back to. Um, 
you know, let's get into some of those details. Like, example, uh, 2 Corinthians 6 and 4, it says, But in all things approve in ourselves as the ministers of the Most High in much patience. So those, those are details, all right? And, and it's beautiful that the Apostle Paul, he detailed these things, too. So he wasn't just saying things. He was giving you details, like patience. All right? We know patience comes with suffering, all right? It says, in afflictions. All right. Patience in afflictions. All right. So you constantly listen, being afflicted in this gospel, man, is it's, it, it's a sign. Because remember what Paul said, approving ourselves that we ministers of the most. High. So you can when you catching hell, all right, although it hurts, I'm not going to sit here and say it's not painful. But once you accept that it's supposed to be painful, it's supposed to be uncomfortable, it's supposed to be, uh, uh, um, you know, nerve wracking at times, you know, because of what you're going through or whatever. Um that's that's crazy that's that sucks it's true that is that sucks but on the flip side understand that that is also a part of what a part of uh the fact you know not the maybe or maybe not it's also a part of a fact that you going through an approval process meaning your name is actually on a list of of men that the heavenly father Yahweh Hashem Shai is putting on the approval process which that is a an incredible blessing because I tell you what, you brothers know certain places you go to to try to uh, uh, purchase an item, they just look at you, they just look at you and pull your name up and they say, "Nah, man, we good." And you like, so well, y'all not even gonna give me a chance? Like, nah, we good. And you like, but I got that. No, we good. You know what I'm saying? They won't even give you an opportunity. But then you go to a spot that you like. And then they're like, okay, cool. We're going we gonna, we gonna to look at your files. We're going to get, we need this. We need that. We need that. We need that. You know what I'm saying? We got to try you with the woo. And then, but the fact that they took your profile and they are, and they, they are basically going through a period of assessing you sitting at home like, yo, I got a shot. And that's where we are. When the majority of men of Israel, right, they're not even given the opportunity. The most I ain't even looking at their profile, man. That's why they're not afflicted like we're afflicted. That's why they're not catching hell the way we're catching hell. They catch, they're catching the regular hell that a regular Israelite would catch because he's an Israelite who's being wicked and breaking the laws and unfaithful. But there's a different type of hell that the hopeful elect deal with because those are those the hell that we deal with goes with in some really deep personal things about us, you know. And then we having to face these things. We having to go into these dark places to fight these demons. But the the, the two thirds majority of Israelites, nah, man, they they don't even engage into that. All right, all right. So that's very important to know that. That's why the affliction is necessary. It's a sign. When I get afflicted, it's it's hurtful as hell. But in the same token, as I'm in that place when I am when I'm down and out, I still be like I I still be like okay. But this is a sign that the Lord is dealing. You know what I'm saying? This is a sign that the Lord is dealing. It hurts like hell, but this is a sign that the Lord is dealing. When things are too nice and I go into a little streak of good things happening, I'm a little worried sometimes. I got to be like, hey, man, is he just, what's going on here? You know what I'm saying? So let's keep going. It says, in necessities, which it goes into affliction, you know, necessities, financial, economical, all these different things, in distresses, nerve wracking situations, you know, all these crazy wild situations that are happening. Just know these are signs that, that, that you know, your profile has been accepted and it's being, it's under review, you know, it's under review, you know, you know for a possible seal of approval. From from the Almighty, you know, from Yahweh by Shem Yom So it's very important. It says in stripes, which we already know, not physical stripes, I mean, but you get different stripes. You know, we go off, things happen. You know, you get your ass kicked by the Lord when you go off. You know, but it's a sign that the Lord deals, all right? It says um, in imprisonments, which we know what that's all about. Been through that. And tumults. Now, tumults, tumults. I wanted, uh, I looked up the word tumult. And this was came out. It, it says commotion, bustle, uproars, disorder, disturbance. All right. Disturbance. And then when I heard the word disturbance, uh, this this came out. Of course, an old wise man once said, I felt a great disturbance in the force as if millions of voices suddenly let out a collective groan and then moved on with their lives. It was like, which if you know what this is, this this is, of course, 
off of Star Wars, you know, fictional characters, Obi-Wan Kenobi, the wise man, you know, sensing the force, the spirit, like the disturbance in the spirit, which we've all felt that. We feel that all the times, man. You just know when you're around certain people, certain individuals, things go a certain way, demons jump on people, and they disturb your spirit, your environment. Shit, demons jump on you and you feel a tumult within yourself. You feel a disturbance in your spirit. And you like, hold the F up. There's something going on. Or like the, uh, the elder uh, Menagon in the camp always talks about you'll feel, uh, you'll feel pain in the spirit. You know, and then and you, you'll be because certain brothers is catching hell. And you feel that disturbance in the spirit. All right, that tumult in the spirit. All right, and you are actually affected because we all connected in truth. All right, we brother, we have a brotherhood in truth, so we feel each other's pain, whether we know it or not. So now, let's go to the uh, the actual um scripture. This is um, this is Romans. I have a few scriptures. Romans chapter eight, verse twenty-three. It says, "And not only they," again, Paul speaking. Not only they, but ourselves also. He's talking about the whole creature groaning. As a matter of fact, let's just read 22. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Why? Because Esau's in rulership, the devil is ruling the earth, and he's been bringing miseries for 800 years. You know, Rothschilds, Rockefeller, International Bank and Families, man, just creating a whole matrix to destroy men across the globe, but in particular the men of Israel, right? Um, it says... Um, uh, verse 23 and not only they but ourselves also which have the first fruits of the spirit all right even we ourselves grown within ourselves it's that tumult that disturbance in the spirit you know it's been several several times you know i remember just yesterday i was driving to work and i was in a tumultuous place in the spirit you know letting off a lot of pain and anger through speech um you know what i'm saying and and and, and I needed that because I was disturbed. I felt like I was going to blow up. I felt like I was going to go mad if I didn't just other words out of my mouth. I had to let that out because it was tumult within my spirit. And then you have the demons around you. They bring tumult, you know, amongst your spirit. You feel that disturbance. All right. It says uh, for um, even we ourselves grown within ourselves waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, what doth he yet hope for? Now, next precept, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 2. Um, I'm going to start at 1. It says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle would dissolve, we have a building of the Most High, and house not made with hands, eternal in heaven. For in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is in heaven. So that's the reason why we groan, you know, it's just it's 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 like the triumphing of the wicked is is very distressing to the spirit and it's it's, it's a great disturbance. All right, that's the greatest disturbance in the in the quote unquote force in the spirit is is the rulership of Edom Esau and wickedness winning. Or, or well, the appearance of wickedness winning. Wickedness just being given this time to, you know, to, to basically um, shine, so to speak. You know, if you're a true man of the Lord and you live in truth and you want to die for truth, that is, those are very difficult things to deal with day, you know, day to day. But it's because we have hope in the Mashiach Yahweh we have hope for a better country, we have hope for a better place, we able to not go mad, you know, when we get into those spaces. All right, so... um I think I had another one. Second Corinthians five and four. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up in life. So we groan for the right reason. You know what I'm saying? We groan for the right reason. We ain't out here talking about, hey Lord, I'm I'm catching hell. I wish I could be winning in this world. If you just give me a big ass house, you give me a wife, you know, you give me a a a, a, a Porsche, you know, nine eleven, you know, I'll be no, we're not. That's without while we're groaning, okay? 
We're groaning because we want something different. The things here do not appear to us as valuable. These things are temporary. They have no value. They have no weight. All right. And they are irksome to the spirit. We want something different. We want what's ours. We want a new bodies. We want our rulership. We want our law statutes commitments be established. We know we want Yahweh Bashem Yashar to you know to reign. We we want all these things. All right. And um, so now let's go to um, oh no, let's go back actually. Let's go back to Second Corinthians six and. Five, it says, in stripes and imprisonment and tumults, we deal with tumults and labors. Of course, the labor never stops. You know, slavery never stops until you, you know, until the society collapses. Slavery, ain't, you know, our slavery ain't gonna stop. You know, it's just a plantation, man. You already know. So, it says in watchings. All right. So I want to, I want to focus on watchings because that's when the prophets, the, the you know, the prophets and the prophecy comes in. The, you know, this is very critical. And um, so uh, let's go to um. Because when we talk about watchings, I thought about, again, another, you know, I, hey, listen, that's just, this came out my mind, you know, Game of Thrones. Every time I talk about the watch, I remember, you know, I, I got a series called The Watchtower. Um, you know, brothers that know me know I'm big on, on those type of movies, ancient, you know, movies with shields and swords and just an ancient lifestyle, man. That's just, that's just me. Um... And then you talk about the watch. Uh, of course, you had the Night's Watch but my man Jon Snow, Game of Thrones. If you don't know Game of Thrones, you should check it out. It's good, you know. Um, of course, right here, they pledged the watch, which we did this. We all did this. We all pledged and gave an oath to Yahweh Bashem El Shaddai. We will be on the watch, you know, and a watch for the events and measure it according to the scriptures and bring the prophecy, right, to warn the nation of Israel, in particular the elect. All right, and here they sword. They say, I'm the sword in the darkness. I'm the watcher on the walls. I'm the shield that guards the realms of men. I remember that part that I was just like, I was getting goosebumps, man, because I was like, I, I I felt like I was, you know, like it was just, that's the type of stuff I like to see, man. Um, So now let's go to, um, let's correlate that to the scriptures. This is Isaiah chapter 62 and 1. It says, for Zion's sake, which Zion is Israel. It says, for Zion's sake. Will I not hold my peace? And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest. I will not rest. And Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. And Jerusalem now, unfortunately, Jerusalem now, Jerusalem has been captive for over 500 years in the land called, in the lands called the Americas, North, Northern and Southern America. All right. So it says, um, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. All right. It says verse, uh, and I'm going to jump down to uh, 6. It says, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. All right? So these are different signs that, like Paul said, approving, approving ourselves to be the ministers of the Most High. So you don't need another man to tell you if you're a man, of, if you are a man of the Lord, a minister of Yahweh Bashem El Shah. You need to look at yourself and your actions and how you moving. I, when you, the way you live, the way you moving in this gospel, is it according to the, all these different details? If it is, then you are indeed that. You are indeed a man of the Lord that's that's fighting, that's striving to to. To find out if he will be approved of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His Son, Yahweh Shai. Okay? It says in fasting, it says by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, which is pain, man. It's pain, long suffering is pain. By kindness, all right? So you have to be kind, man. Kindness is it's, it's not just, of course, the offerings and stuff is good, but also kindness goes with mercy. You know, it's a lot easier to um, to be open open to your brother when your brother hasn't done anything to you, but when your brother has uh, done something to you, and then you able to give that mercy, that's that truly is kindness. You know, that truly is kindness. You know, so um, it says by the Holy Spirit, which gives us understanding, right? So the Hakodash. By love and fame, I meaning no fake love. All right, you can't have love that's you know with dissimulation in love. You got to keep it a buck. You got to keep it a buck with your brother. You got to keep it a buck with yourself. And once you're able to keep it a buck with yourself, man, then you can easily keep it a buck with everybody else. 
you know, and then and then that's just how it's going to be. Now, is everything good always going to be smooth? No. But the thing is, love comes in two ways. All right? Sometimes love is going to be smooth. But in the season that we're in, some, a, lot, a lot of times, you know, depending on the correction and different things that need to happen, love has to be tough. You know what I'm saying? Like if you out here going off and, 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 and you know, and you're not and, and if you're going off and, and, and I'm not correcting you, I'm showing I'm showing feigned love, you know, fake love. If I'm going off, I'm not being corrected. My brother's showing me fake love, you know. So these are different things that you need, you know, if you involve into that dynamic, uh, which is part of the gospel. All right. You know, then, yeah, you are you are you are in the in the game. You're in the match. You know, you are you're being reviewed by the almighty Yahweh and his son Yahweh Shai. And I'm telling you, man, the majority of Israel is as the sand of the sea and the majority of Israelites are not even, their profile are not even on review for approval, man. Going back again to the purchase of item, purchase of land, purchase of chariots, all right? Whatever you purchase in this world, you know the details on what you got to go through, all right? But it ain't no different with Yahweh by Shemel Shai. It just is more on the spiritual aspect, all right? And um, and I think that that yeah, it's just about the word of truth, all right? Which you got to be high on truth and Lord willing, that's gonna be. I'm gonna speak on that, Lord willing, uh, when I make uh, my next um audio video, you know, um, which you know I do that quick little five minutes just audio when I just kind of, you know, I think the title's gonna be that. I've been thinking about that, man, being high on truth, man. Got to be high on truth. But it says by the word of truth, by the power of the most high, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left hand. All right. So arm yourself in righteousness, which is faith. All right. That's how you arm yourself in righteousness on the right hand and the left hand, because you do have a right hand and you do have a left hand. You need to know what they are. That's another thing, too. That's how you find out about yourself. You need to find out about your right hand, how you move your right hand and your left hand. The difference between them. You have to understand these things. And if you have faith, you're going to be armed against it because Satan is going to move through your left hand to take you down. Right. And minimize the things that you do on your right hand. But if you have faith in your whole body, it's an armor. All right. You have faith that yo, you have a shot down for my sins. Satan, so you cannot take me down. I don't care what you say. All right. So um, uh, I think that. uh. We almost, we almost, um, we almost done, man. Um, what did I have? Um, okay, so, oh, oh, I think I did have some, like, yeah, like, um, okay, okay. Um, no, 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 there's some more. Actually, we going all the way down to 10, so lock it. Um, this is by the word of truth, by the power of the most high, by the armor of, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, which is true. This is an open secret. The Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans being the Israelites, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is an open secret. That's what the scripture said, as unknown and yet well known, all right? It says, as dying and behold, we live. And I, I think this is where... I had this um, precept as dying, but yet we live. Um, Paul said, hey, um, 1 Corinthians 15 and 31, it says, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in the Mashiach, Yahusha, our Lord. I die daily. All right. So it, listen, we're dying, man. We're dying daily. But really, it's the carnal mind that's dying. That's why it's so tough because, you know, who you were for a very long time, that person is dying off and nobody wants to die. The flesh doesn't want to die. So anybody who anything that wants to die is going to want to cling to life. So the flesh, which is corrupted, is trying to desperately cling to life by pulling you down. And you just got to say, nah, man, die, flesh, die. OK, die, flesh, die. OK, um. <clears throat> so let's go to uh, <clears throat> Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him, right? Overcame him, Esau, right? And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, Yahusha, and by the word of their testimony, the prophecies. And they loved not their lives unto death. So even if you got to face the music, um, you know, it is what it is. You know, we we did. Like, we did. We in that space. Like, Esau, do what the hell you got to do, all right? 
And uh, we pray the Lord keeps us in that space because we know the flesh is going to definitely uh, that when listen, when the blade comes out or whatever it is, if that's if that's your destiny, the, the, the flesh is going to want to cling to actual life at a highest point. And the Lord is going to have to be with you, man, to give you a greater understanding, a greater faith, a greater courage, a greater everything to overcome your flesh if you have to go through that. All right. So. um I think that was um, oh another one, um, Acts chapter fifteen and twenty six. It said, "Men that have hazarded their lives in the, for the name of our Lord Hamashiach shot Plain and simple. All right, plain and simple. All right. So almost time to close this out. Second um, Corinthians six and nine as unknown and yet well known as dying and behold we live as chastened and not killed." As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. As poor, yet making many rich. Yeah, I made a video about that. A lesson about that. Poor in life, you know, rich in spirit. You know, that explains everything. Like, poor in life, rich in spirit. As having nothing, and yet possessing all things. Alright, so. We're going to close out with uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. It says, actually, I'm going to start at 12. Not as though I had already attained... Either were already perfect, but I follow after. If that I may apprehend, that for which also I am apprehended of Yahweh Shai. That is so powerful. We have to read the Bible version. We have to read the different Bible version. What Paul said is basically what this lesson is about. It's going through the process of approval. Not approved yet, but going through the process of approval. So let's go to um, let's go to NLT. What does the NLT say? I don't mean to say that I have already achieved. I mean, I don't mean to say that I'm approved already. These things, I don't I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection. But I press on to possess that perfection for which Hamashiach Yahushua first possessed me. All right. I mean, come on, man. Yeah, man. Come on. Paul Paul was beast in spirit. Um, so let's go. Um all right, verse thirteen, brethren. I count not myself because this Okay. So I can Verse thirteen, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Right. So when Yahweh says, you know, the scripture says we rich and we possess all things is that we possess the greatest thing, man. Being Israelites, hopefully like the kingdom of heaven, the future. That And, and that's the thing. The past is very important. The present is what it is. But man, the winners are the ones who win the future, man. And the thing is, is. Who's going to win the future? It's Israel. It's Yasha Allah, man. We, we, the future is ours, man. And Esau knows it and he's mad. And he's trying to do all this technolog technological BS, mark of the beast, microchip. All this stuff is not going to matter. Esau is the present, but the future is Yasha Allah, man. Always remember that Esau is the present, but the future is Jacob. All right. Verse 14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of the Most High in Hamashiach Yahushua. Let us therefore as many as be perfect, be thus minded. If in anything ye be otherwise minded, the Most High shall reveal even this unto you. And that's facts. You know, that's, that's facts. So I'm going to stop right there, man. That's basically the lesson. The lesson is about approval. You know, uh, like Paul said, approving ourselves in these different details. Um, I know without a doubt, you know, you brothers and a few sisters that do listen with edify as I was edified. Um, you know, Brakatay Hawa, Brakatay Yahusha, Brakatay Hawa, Bashim Yahusha, Bashim Hakudash, double honors to our apostles, elders, great millstone, Shalom, Sedition. The only sense that I can across the four winds, um, fighting, fighting this good fight of faith to find out if you are, you know, uh, uh, approved. If you will be approved of the Heavenly Father Yahweh, you know, we know what we got to do. Just got to stick to it, show consistency, faith, and um, let everything fall into the hands of Yahweh by Shemel Shah. All right. So, Kasama got for me, DC Camp. Shalom.